Welcome to the Bourbon Van. I'm Phil. I'm Julie. Let's drink some barrel proof rye. Yes, let's. So this blind flight is basically a challenge of three rye whiskeys that are barrel proof or cask strength that are sourced from MGP and one outlier that comes to us from Wild Turkey. We were looking through our collection. We found a whole bunch of rye whiskeys that are kind of similar in proof and in description, but are wildly different in terms of time spent in the barrel, flavor, aroma, and more. So we decided why not take these wildly different yet somehow the same barrel proof ryes and put them against one another. And it should be pretty interesting because I've had all four of these. Some days I like them, some days I don't. So who knows what's gonna happen today. <laughs> Absolutely, a couple of these right off the neck we really, really liked. And then the next time we tried them, we weren't that fond of. Yeah. And then vice versa, a couple of them we didn't like off the neck at all. And the next time we tried them, they were amazing. So let's do a quick rundown of what we're going to be tasting today and we'll get right to it. The first three are MGP products and the last one will be our wild turkey. Up first is Redemption Barrel Proof Rye Whiskey. 116.2 proof. This one is aged for 10 full years. We paid $98 for it here in Oregon and we're really happy to find it because it is quite rare around here. Up next, Sagamore Spirit Cask Strength Rye Whiskey. This one comes to us from Maryland. It is 112.2 proof, aged for four years. We do hear that it's more affordable elsewhere, but we paid $80 for it here in Oregon. The last of the MGP products in this lineup, James E. Pepper 1776 Barrel Proof Rye, 116.9 proof, aged for only three years, and it sells for $47 here in Oregon. It's easily the cheapest and the youngest and the strongest of this flight. Finally, Wild Turkey Rare Breed Barrel Proof Rye, 112.2 proof. It's a blend of four, six, and eight years aged whiskeys, and it sells for $60 here in Oregon. I poured these, Julie mixed them up, We'll check out nose, palate, finish. We'll give you our tasting notes as we go. We'll have no idea what we're sipping, but you'll see it on the bottom of the screen. In the end, we'll let you know what each of us thinks should be placed number one through number four, and then you can comment and let us know how wrong we are. <laughs> Let's get to the nose on glass one. There's a lot going on in this one. <laughs> it is complex. I expect a lot of complexity from each of these. You can smell that there's a melting pot of like a lot of flavors, but I can't really pick them out, but there's mm -hmm. something sweet that's like hidden underneath that's just trying to like yeah. get out. It is complex. I get almost that Band-Aid sort of rubbery mm. uh, smell. It is a little bit medicinal in nature, but there's like a sweet grass mm. that's happening underneath there. You're right. There's something sweet mm -hmm. sort of pulling all those other flavors along and uh, a little bit of like chalkiness. Yes, I got a, I got some chalkiness on that. White chalk. I don't not like it. <laughs> Good note. On to glass number two. Okay. Mm. Ooh, this smells like barbecue sauce. It's got some sort of meaty, charred meat funk to it. It also has a really strong rye note, though. I the like grain your, is powerful. Yeah, I like your charred note too because. It's a bit a bit like a charred like a, a s'more, so like a charred marshmallow. Because there's a little bit sweet in there. Yeah. It's smoky. It's caramelized barbecue sauce on a s'more. Okay. I'd eat it. <laughs> I know you would. <laughs> Alright, let's try out number three. Because the first it. two were so different. That's super different. Oh my gosh. This is wildly different. Wow. Uh, I'm getting this crazy baby powder this to it there's there's a little chalkiness here i think it's fruity it's it's like strawberry jam it's really oh. jammy actually it smells so dry to me it smells like really worn old oak almost musty yes yeah. almost musty and old is a good term and the ethanol is there it masks things a little bit and it also singes my nose hairs on the glass four i can't wait i'm just scooping them up i cannot <laughs> wait oh wow Oak, cider. Oh, there's a ton going on here. There's cider for sure. But apple is definitely not the main fruit there. I'm getting like a Bing cherry, like a bright cherry. It's almost like one of those, um, those chocolate covered cherries that you would get at Christmas time. Yeah, absolutely. It is fruity. It is oaky. It's really rye-like. This one just screams rye to me, like the grain. Yeah. It's exactly what I've been expecting this entire time. This is 
Pretty amazing. There's a spice there too, yeah? Yeah, there's a hint of pepper. Black pepper. Like a black spicy yeah. pepper. Ooh, oh, I'm excited. Yeah, these smell amazing. I will say I like the nose on three and four the best. Not that it really makes a difference, but I just, they were so interesting to me. They but are they're all like crazy different. All right. Ready? I'm so ready. Glass one. Cheers. Cheers. Ooh. A little heat there. <laughs> but I got Surprise. a lot of, like I got a lot of oak on that one. That medicinal sort of thing is still hanging around. Now there's like an herbal Kentucky hug I'm getting. Yeah, it's like a tea. Yeah, maybe a hint of black licorice, but kind of red licorice too, don't you think? Mm -hmm. There's a sweetness here. It is really nice. It's got a really great mouthfeel, a really nice finish. I know we're not yeah. talking about a finish yet, but like it's nice and warm. Look but it thinking is. thinking about a finish. I know. Wow. But the flavors, I mean, I called this one the melting pot originally because I knew there was a lot of sweet notes in there. There was a lot of flavors that weren't being super distinguishable. Mm -hmm. And it's the same on the palate, but they're like a really lovely taste. There's a lot going on here. The There's leather on the palate. Ooh. Do you remember those lemon candies that like, you would have with, as a kid? Like lemon, lemon drops. Yeah. And they're more sweet than tart. Yeah. That is right here on the tongue. I am loving this one. Now that you've mentioned finish, that's the prevailing thing that hangs around here is that sort of lemon drop candy. That's fantastic. So that one's got tremendous crazy flavors, mm -hmm. but it doesn't hit me like, this is a rye whiskey. It's just like, Wow, no. that was a really wild ride. So glass two, that was my sweet barbecue s'more. <laughs> <laughs> Let's drink some barbecue sauce covered uh, grilled marshmallows. Ooh. Gosh, the nose. Oh my gosh, it tastes like, it tastes like grilled barbecue something, barbecue sauce. Wow, is this weird. That is the most bizarre thing I've ever tasted. Right? Am I crazy? Does it taste wow, like barbecue is this sauce? Weird. It's so <laughs> strange. There's clove and black pepper. This is bizarre. These, yeah, it's like a it's like a grill kit. Like you're out there and you're using all of the spices. Yeah, it's but you're not, just like flavoring your drink. Yeah, these are not baking spices. These are grilling spices. Mm -hmm. Think about this. What about a grilled apricot? Well, Weirdly, I was like, I wonder if that's an apricot, but I honestly don't know what an apricot tastes like. But to me, that was the thing that came into my head. Because I wanted to say peach, but it's not peach. Nope. I'm going to write it down just because <laughs> I, it also popped into my head and I cannot confirm or deny. <laughs> <laughs> There's some butterscotch here. Mm. It's actually really good. Oh, butterscotch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it tastes to me, this hits like a rye hits. It's a little weird. <laughs> this is a rye whiskey for sure. Yeah. Like, you know it as soon, as soon as you taste it. Yeah. That's interesting. Maybe not a rye whiskey for beginners. <laughs> I would agree with that. <laughs> or maybe it is because it's, you know. Bad. Shoot, Yeah, shoot the moon. Go for it. All right, so number three for my usual crazy tasting notes is my wildly different, pretty dry baby powder drink. A little talcum. Here we go. <laughs> oh, it's all still there too. Oh, it is just the most bizarre nose ever. It smells amazing. It, Let's do it. It Let's is do like it. limestone -y. Well, it doesn't taste like that. Ooh, that one's nice. There is a nice sweetness wow. in there. Ooh. For all the insanity oh, on wow, the that nose? nose is, yeah. The, the nose is a liar. The nose is a liar. For all the insanity on the nose, I've got tobacco here. I've got mint. Like, sp oh. just, like mm -hmm. spearmint. Oh, it's all over my palate now. That's, here comes the saliva. This is that rush. Wow, this is flavorful. You're like a sweet mint in there. Exactly. Yeah, because mm. I don't like spearmint, but this I really one, like what's happening here. I'm getting the rye dance on this one. This one's got some good rye spices. They're not super pronounced, but you can tell that they're in there. Like, yeah, it's rye really spice nice and flavorful. all over the place on this one. This is great. And the... That oak that was a little bit musty on the nose mm -hmm. is much sweeter on the palate. Yeah. Dried cherries. Mm. Dried something. There's some like a craisin. Ooh. Yeah. And I did say that this one was dry on the nose and it actually has dried up my tongue quite a bit. It? So it's pretty dry all the way through. There's cherry, there's mint, and there's oak. That's what's yep. hanging around here on the back end. And there's even some chocolate there. I like that a ton. <laughs> 
I feel like it's starting to come together. Like I feel like there's a recipe coming together. If I think of what this reminds me of, I'll, I'll say it's cohesive. But if I don't, I'll say it's not cohesive at all because I can't come up with it. <laughs> I gotta get some of this saliva out of my mouth. I feel like I need well, to go to the dent. I need to get one of those things that the dentist uses. Oh yeah, yeah. Like... Well, I was just thinking how <laughs> my, I said that it was dry, but now my mouth is watering. Okay, so glass number four. Glass four, let's get to this it. This was, I said, oak cider rye, black pepper, chocolate covered cherries, which sounds delicious. Yeah, you got me all excited for this one. Let's do this. Tart cherry, wow. That tastes like lemon. That was so strange. Almost like a, was that so strange or am I on here? What a weird ride this one has. I, is this a rye thing where the nose and the palate just... Are completely different? I, I got lemon on this one. I got more tart lemon on this one. And again, I would say probably spearmint, which I don't usually like, but it belongs in here. There is some oak. There is caramel. I'm going to say white pepper. Ooh, this one got me a Kentucky hug Ooh. all the way down in my belly. It went all the way down. Sweet mint. Ooh. Sweet mint. Yes. Ooh, the mouthfeel on this one. It is viscous. It is so spicy. Holy cow. Wow. And it's got toffee. I like your toffee candy. I mean, I just like toffee candy, but I like the toffee candy on the palate. <laughs> Ooh, this is spicy. This is, this Ooh, one's it is crazy. Warm. This one gives me a nice little hug. Mm. There's some smoke though. There's some barrel char. I don't know. This might sound a little bit crazy, but I just took that sip and it almost tastes like like grape bubble gum. I mean, they say it's grape, but it's just purple. Um, there's just, mm. oh, my pants. Ooh, I really like yeah, that. There's a candy sweetness here. I, I'm getting that sort of fake grape candy yeah. sort of thing, like cheap grape soda. Like think of the cheapest Ooh, brand of grape yeah, soda yeah. that you can find. No, that's grape what, soda. That's yeah, what this yeah. is. Yeah. All right, so you ready to go the other way? Let's go back the other way. This are is going to be crazy. To are you going to start order. with three? Because I've uh, dominated to... class four already. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to class three okay. before you run out. It's hard to drink with a cat in your lap. It is dinner time for the cat, if you can't tell, which is why he's going to now be wandering back and forth. <laughs> you're, you're such a nuisance. <laughs> I'm getting like old huge pieces of well-preserved oak, mm. like that giant lumber from a boat or something. Oh. I don't know, or maybe just a great old bar or a lodge or something like that. <gasps> this Ooh. is, there's, now I'm starting to, to get something from this one. You're getting a nice cohesive flavor there. This strikes me as something that's been in the barrel for a really long time. And because of that, it's got muted flavors. Nothing's really sticking out or like punching in the face. Yeah. Well, and you made that comment about the old lodge and I have to agree. Like there's just something about going into like an old ski lodge or whatever and it has that little like musty smell to it. Tobacco and, and um, leather on glass three now. Yeah. Everything, there's so many flavors here, but I can't put them into a single recipe because it's not a recipe. It's a feeling. It's a, it's a cozy cabin around a stone hearth with a leather chair and the old wood and the oak beams like that for the beautifully well-preserved beams holding up the roof. It's a good winter whiskey. I think it's yeah. a good springtime whiskey. I'm enjoying it right now. True. Uh, that's what it is to me. It's not a recipe. It's a feeling. And what's better than that? It sounds like a song. It's not a recipe. It's a feeling. <laughs> no, okay, sorry. I'll stop. It seems like the wrong, <laughs> it seems like the wrong sort of attitude <laughs> for this whiskey. I think it should be much more subtle. But... You know, hey, whatever you you, you want to rock, do your thing. That's you. I listen to monster ballads. <laughs> That's rough. Here we go. Back to glass two. Like it. Oh, yeah, this is the barbecue sauce Holy meat one. Holy It had like so much sweetness. And as soon as I got the sweetness out of the way, it was like, you want some barbecue sauce in your nose? Yeah, it's a grilled caramelized fruit. Mm-hmm with barbecue sauce. This one is weird. I mean, I, I, I like the I want to really it. like this one because it's so unique. I mean, I don't think I've ever had anything like There's a like ton this. of flavor here, absolutely. But like, when could you drink it? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I like that sip a lot better. Dang it, I hate that. When we get to the end, I'm always like, they like them all. I'm going on to one. This does have a good mouthfeel though. On to one, we're not, okay. I'm not Let me keep up with here. you. This Man. one seems far more bourbon-like. Mm. Ooh, like, I like this one. A lot more bourbon-like, but 
Yeah, drinks. This one is very tea-y. Yeah, even though there's a ton of flavor here, it's subtle and gentle mm -hmm. compared to the other ones. It's not nearly as brash, I don't think. No, 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 that's good. It, you're right, there's no brashness on this. That's good. That's good. Well, I like when See, you I'm make a, like good notes because it makes me any think. other Any other husbands out there get that <laughs> note every once in a while? That's good, keep that up, do keep, that. <laughs> do that one exactly like that. I put brashness. No! <laughs> no brash. Sure. I had already wrote brashness. Mm. There's a beautiful balance to this one. The last one really stands out to me. That's that's good whiskey. I like the last one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna do a little bit of A/B testing. And I have three that I've just wrote like, and then <laughs> one that I'm putting in fourth. This will be interesting because you know I'm just a. This one tastes good first, and you think it all the way through. <laughs> Maybe. I'm just a, I'm a whim drinker. <laughs> uh, I've got an order. Oh, crap. <laughs> I've got last place figured out. <laughs> that's, that's it. I bet I can take a guess at what it is. I bet you can too. Three, one, and four are all possible first place finishers because they all tickle my fancy in different ways. And I am a guy who likes having his fancy tickled. You know what I mean? The cat is being very bossy. <laughs> very bossy. So it's a good thing we've got our decision made, right? I think so. All right, I'm ready. Say hi to everybody. They missed you because you weren't around. Yeah, look at for those of you that have been following week. along. He uh, had his little belly shave for a procedure, <gasps> no, I think and now him. and now his fur is growing in. Look at that white belly. Look at how his fur is growing back. Good boy. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, so it's time to talk about where these finished for each of us. Would you like to give me your fourth place? I would. Glass number two okay. is my fourth place, which was that rando barbecue marshmallow one. Yeah, it's just way too intense for me, this one. Yeah, I mean, a couple sips and you're good. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if I can drink a whole glass. I, I actually could not did... do a session with this. Yeah, I actually yeah. did it. Re... I mean, obviously I drank the whole glass. Actually, <laughs> you yeah, always yeah, I drink the whole glass. Um, it's just bizarre. Like, it's yeah. one of those where it's like you don't want to stop drinking it because it's so bizarre. Yeah, this is so weird. I don't want to quit. Let's find out what it Let's is. Let's find out what it is. Glass number two. Oh, I guess we need to look at the letter. A. Hey, that's... People are going to be upset about this. We just lost <gasps> some friends. Sagamore Spirit Rye. I remember being strength. a little bit wishy-washy on this one, yeah. so. I did this Whiskey in the Van Wednesday episode by myself, and uh, some people were not happy with me. Because you didn't like on it? On that one, because it, I did, I oh. like it, but this yeah, this bottle was a $80 bottle, and I, I don't think it's $80 good. I know some of you out there are getting this a lot cheaper, and it's making a lot of lists. Yeah. This one just doesn't hit our palates. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. And you definitely shouldn't be afraid of buying this one. Maybe not for $80, but if you get it for cheaper than that, for a reasonable price, I think it's still a good whiskey. What is your third place? So I'm guaranteeing that this is your number one. The other three, you could intermix them and I don't really care. Mm -hmm. But I put glass number three as my number three. It You're was... going to put the cozy cabin in third we place? We put the cozy cabin in third just That's because, bananas. you know, I have a sweet tooth and I just like the lemon drops better. I love that sort of totally. cozy, rich, uh, over-the-top, leathery, oaky, just kind of tastes old type of character. I think this is our tenure. And I'm excited oh. to find out exactly what this is. Glass three, number one for me, number three for you. Let's take a look. Yeah. Glass C. C. That's the Redemption Rye 10 Year Barrel Proof Whiskey. So this little guy right here, which is one of my favorite bottles, it has imperfections mm -hmm. in it, a lot like High West does with their bottles. It has the cool wooden cork with the strap on top, so it's almost like a holster. It's not going to get loose on you there. It's secured. Yeah. That's kind of nice. I remember being disappointed off the neck. Like I remember being like, "Ah, oh, crap! That was a waste of money." <laughs> but no, then you're right. it wasn't that great off. Yeah, the neck. but then I had it again not too long ago, and I was like. Like, got real excited because I really yeah. did like it. And we, I did like it today. Yeah. It's just sweet versus, you know. And for me, we had some of this around the campfire lately, uh, just recently. And it yeah. was amazing around the campfire. It yeah. was a beautiful bottle. This is, of all of them, probably the most hit or miss for me, depending on how I'm feeling that day. This one just hits my palate. I, I think it's terrific. I Obviously, it's a $98 bottle. You expect it to be terrific. The two most expensive bottles... Off finish the table. third and fourth for you. Yeah, I'm a cheap date. We'll find out how cheap in just a second. Yeah. <laughs> All right, second 
place. Second place for me, I said it a hundred times already, toss up, um, was class number one. That's my second place as well. This one is the most urban-like of this group. It is flavorful, it is delicious. Mm -hmm. I could just drink this all night. It would be great in almost any situation. So easy to sip. I think if you are a bourbon drinker and you're getting into rise and you're looking for something a little stronger, whatever this is, sort of takes the cake. If I had to guess based on the flavors here, I would say that this is probably the wild turkey. Interesting. Yeah. That oakiness, the medicinal, which you know I love, the, yep. the butteriness, that herbal tea. I really, really enjoyed this one. Second place, glass one. D. That's wild turkey, rare breed rye, which Man, if you follow this channel, you know we love Wild Turkey. Highly recommend this bottle. This is a good one. I just realized that my number one now is that 1776. That's really funny because that's the cheapest one. Uh, Correct? By a kind of a landslide. By a, uh, remember when we said country mile? By a country mile. By a country mile. That's still a phrase that we use once. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 1776 Barrel Proof. I don't even know anything about this one. This one finished third for me, first for you. I'm feeling kind of guilty. $47 for this bottle is what we paid for it in Oregon. The highest proof. Mm -hmm. The youngest one. It's only three years age. Oh, it's the highest proof? Yeah. This is surprisingly good whiskey. I remember the, the first time that we took it home. Off the neck, we opened this and I said, this is way better than it should be for $47. Yeah. All right, in fourth place, I have Sagamore. Mm -hmm. In third place, I have Redemption Rye. In, in second place, I have Rare Breed. And in first place, 1776. And for me, it's the Sagamore Spirit Cask Strength. It was just weird enough to finish last. Third is the James E. Pepper, which I actually documented here saying youthful and exciting. So Oh, so you were right. Kind of nailed that one. Second place is the Rare Breed rye for both of us we love that wild turkey product and number one redemption rye the 10 year i am not a cheap date i expect I'm happy that uh, I, maybe a back rub of some type maybe a, a nice dinner <laughs> get to know me a little bit you know what i mean this was a ton of fun yeah and it makes me feel better that we spent uh quite a bit of dollars on that baby and it came in first so that makes it came in first for me um and it makes me realize that uh, when I, next time I need to get you a gift, I should buy you the cheapest thing I can find. <laughs> the, uh, so let us know, have you had these whiskeys? What are we missing here? Is there an MGP rye that we don't have? We basically okay. have all that we can get here in Oregon, but what else do we need to keep an eye out for? And let me know if that Sagamore spirit does taste like barbecue sauce. Or if we're just insane. Or if we're just having a weird day. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know what's your favorite barrel proof rye. Obviously, we didn't include Alberta Premium or Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof rye, the 2020 release. We tried not to pick stuff that is immediately recognizable because we wanted to be fooled on this one, and I think we were. So, like, comment, subscribe. Join us on Patreon for exclusive live streams and bonus content. Check us out on Instagram at The Bourbon Fan. And do you have any left? I do. From wherever we are. To wherever you are. Cheers. Cheers. Kind of glad that Rare Breed didn't turn in first. Have a mutiny on our hands. That tastes like grilled pineapple. Oh. Ooh. Mmm.